Hello, welcome to lesson one of the Practical OSPF series. In this video, we're going to start with the framework for understanding OSPF. We're going to discuss the three tables that OSPF uses to accomplish its goals and the five packets that are involved in every OSPF conversation. And while discussing both of those items, we'll get to introduce two other very important OSPF concepts, and you'll see those shortly. To understand the framework that OSPF uses, we're going to discuss OSPF tables and OSPF packets. OSPF makes use of three different tables, the neighbor table, the topology table, and a routing table. While discussing the topology table, we'll get to introduce two other very important OSPF terms, the link state database, or the LSDB, and link state advertisements, or the LSAs. Insofar as packets, there are five packets that make up every OSPF conversation, and we're going to give you a description of each of them in this lesson. A marker of success for understanding the content of this lesson we'll be understanding the 10 terms you see on your screen right now. With that said, let's jump right into a discussion of the OSPF tables. And we're going to use this topology to talk through it. The first table we're going to discuss is the OSPF neighbor table. Every OSPF router is going to maintain a neighbor table, and in that table is going to be a list of all the other directly connected OSPF routers. The neighbor table itself actually holds a few pieces of information, but the most important one is the state of the adjacency with a particular neighbor. So for example, I want to show you a neighbor table for router 5. Now on Cisco routers, you can use the command show IP OSPF neighbor to view the neighbor table, and you would see output that looks something like this. Router 5 is telling you it is currently neighbors with a router with the neighbor ID of 4.4.4.4. That's going to be router 4 in our topology. And we'll discuss the concept of a router ID later on. Notice router 5 says it is in the full adjacency state with router 4. This tells us that router 4 and router 5 see each other as full neighbors. Here's another neighbor table, this time from the perspective of router 4. Notice router 4 also sees router 5 in the neighbor table and also believes that router 5 is a full neighbor. But notice router 4 also has a neighborship with router 1, 2, and 3 on the right over here. Now notice that the neighbor table only includes directly connected OSPF routers. Router 5 is only going to be neighbors with router 4, because that's the only router it is connected to, whereas router 4 is neighbors with every router in this particular topology. Can you guess what neighbors router 1 is going to have? Hopefully, you're able to deduce that router 1 is going to be neighbors with router 2 and router 4. And that's what you see here on the output of router 1's show IP OSPF neighbor. Now, to be clear, OSPF is a link state protocol, which means every router is going to know about all the other routers in the topology. We're only going to be neighbors with the routers that are directly connected. In a moment, I'm going to prove that to you with router 5. But for now, I just want to make sure you understand what the neighbor table contains. That brings us to the next table we're going to discuss, which is the topology table. Inside the topology table is everything that OSPF knows about. The concept of a topology table is not specific to OSPF. Pretty much every routing protocol has some sort of topology table to store everything it knows about. In OSPF terms, that topology table is referred to as the link state database, or the LSDB. Now, the link state database is a single table which includes everything OSPF knows about, and within the LSDB are a bunch of individual entries. Well, OSPF calls each of those individual entries a link state advertisement, or an LSA. So a link state database is full of link state advertisements. I'm about to show you the link state database for router 5 in this topology. What you'll see is that there is a lot going on with this command, but don't let that intimidate you. We're going to unpack it in more detail later on throughout this course. For now, I just want to give you an example of an OSPF topology table. To view a topology table on a Cisco router, you would use the command show IP OSPF database. And while there is a lot going on with this output, I just want to draw your attention to a few things. First, router 5 believes its own router ID to be 5.5.5.5. .5 .5 .5. You'll see that as a common pattern in most of my slides, where the router ID is simply the router number repeated. Notice router 5 knows about five different routers. It knows about itself, but then it also knows about routers 1, 2, 3, and 4, also in this topology. A moment ago, I told you that every router knows about every other router in the topology. And you can see that in this output of show IP OSPF database. Router 5 does indeed know about all the routers in this topology. Moreover, Router 5 has these additional LSAs over here, which correlate to these three networks in this topology. Notice each of those networks are being advertised by a particular router, Router 1, 2, and 3. 
So this is an example of the LSDB, or the OSPF topology table. And again, the whole thing is the LSDB, or the link state database, and each of these individual entries in the LSDB are referred to as an LSA. Now you might think it'd be interesting to see the same topology table on one of the other routers, for instance, router three, but one of the benefits of OSPF is actually every single router is going to have the same link state database. We know these five routers have converged when they have identical LSDBs. So if I ran this same command on any of these other routers, you would see the exact same LSAs in their LSDB. So that would be the definition of a topology table. It's everything that OSPF knows about. And the last table we're going to discuss is the routing table. Now, the routing table isn't simply a function of OSPF. It's simply the router's actual routing table. We discussed the routing table in the networking fundamentals series. This is the table that routers use to forward packets. Just like any other routing protocol, OSPF is going to calculate its best routes from its topology table and try and send them to the routing table. The router will then decide between all the different ways that it can learn about routes to decide which routes are actually the best and will make it to the real routing table. Here's an example of the routing table for R5. To view the routing table on a Cisco router, you would use the command show IP route. And the routing table is going to show you all the routes that router 5 knows about. Now the output to this command is slightly abbreviated for simplicity, but notice there are three routes that router 5 knows about correlating to these three networks right here in our topology. And two of those routes were learned via OSPF, and one of them happened to be learned via EIGRP. Again, the routing table is not an OSPF function. It's simply the router's actual routing table. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these numbers in here, those are the admin distance and the metric. I talked about both of them in my route precedence video. So feel free to check that out if you want to understand how those values work. In any case, that's an example of the routing table. And that wraps up our discussion of the three tables that OSPF uses. Next, we can talk about the packets that OSPF uses in all OSPF conversations. And there are five of them that we're going to discuss. And to discuss them, we're going to use this topology of three routers. The first packet we're going to discuss are the hello packets. Hello packets are sent periodically to this multicast address, 224.0.0.5. This is a special multicast address reserved for all OSPF routers. This, in fact, is how routers will discover other OSPF routers. When you configure OSPF, the router is going to listen for requests to this address, and other routers are going to start sending these hello packets to the same address. In this way, router 2 will detect that router 1 exists, and router 1 will do the same to detect that router 2 exists. Now, inside these hello packets are a bunch of pieces of information, and we will have a dedicated lesson talking about all the information inside a hello packet. But for now, I'll simply say the content of the hello packet is what's going to determine whether an actual adjacency will form. What you'll find is that even though router 1 and router 2 can exchange hello packets with each other, they're going to be a little bit more selective about who they actually become neighbors with. So that's the purpose of hello packets, which brings us to the DBD packets, or the database descriptor packets. These are also sometimes referred to as DD packets. Either way, inside the DBD packets are a summary of the LSAs in each router's LSDB. Now remember, the LSDB is the entire OSPF topology table, everything that OSPF knows about. And all the entries inside the LSDB are referred to as LSAs. And so router 1 might have a thousand LSAs in its particular LSDB. But what happens is when router 1 and router 2 first discover each other, instead of sending the entire LSDB to router 2, what router 1 does is it sends the DBDs, which is simply a summary of the LSAs it knows about. It's very possible that router 2 knows about some of those LSAs, perhaps via router 3. Using these database descriptor packets spares the routers from both sending and receiving the full LSDB each time they discover a new neighbor. They instead send a summary of the LSAs and allow the other router to ask specifically for the LSAs they need. Now there is one other purpose for these DBD packets, and that's involved in the master and slave election. We'll unpack that when we discuss the actual adjacency process. But for now, this is a sufficient rundown of what a DBD packet contains. Understand that when router 1 sends the summary of the LSAs, it is now up to router 2 to then determine which LSAs it actually needs. And it's going to ask for specific LSAs using the next packet on our list, a link state request. Inside a link state request packet is a list of the LSAs that a particular router needs. 
This is the type of packet that router 2 will use to tell router 1 about which LSAs it needs. This will prompt router 1 to then respond by sending the LSAs in a link state update packet, or an LSU. And finally, router 2 will confirm reception of those packets by sending a link state acknowledgement, or an LSAC. I want you to see some of the reliability that's built into OSPF. Router 1 knows a DVD was received because router 2 is then going to send a link state request. And router 2 is going to know that the link state request was received because router 1 is then going to respond with a link state update. And then router 2 is going to confirm receiving that link state update by sending an LSAC. So you see there's an intrinsic reliability to the OSPF conversation. All five of these packets will be involved every time a new neighbor adjacency is formed. But if router 1 and router 2 have already gone through this process and already become adjacent to one another, and router 1 then learns of a new network, router 1 will simply send a link state update to its neighbors with information about that new network. Remember, OSPF is a link state database, which means all these routers know everything the other routers know. Which means if router 1 learns something new, it already knows whether router 2 and router 3 need to know that piece of information. So it can go straight to sending a link state update which of course will be confirmed with a link state acknowledgement. So when routers who are already neighbors with one another learn something new, only these two packets are involved to update their peers about the new piece of information. So that's the rundown on the five different packets that are used in OSPF conversations. And with that said, we wrap up our discussion on the OSPF packets, and in fact, this entire lesson. In this lesson, we talk through the framework of OSPF by discussing the three tables that OSPF uses, this let us define two important terms, the link state database and the link state advertisements. And finally, we talked through the five different packets involved in OSPF. The main takeaway for this lesson is understanding the 10 terms that are on your screen right now. Those include the three tables that OSPF uses, the terms LSDB and LSA, and finally, the five packets that are involved in all OSPF conversations. In the next lesson, we're going to be discussing the concepts of OSPF areas. And we'll use that to discuss the four types of routers you'll see in OSPF. But that's it for this lesson. If you enjoyed this lesson and think it should be shown to a wider audience, you can help me out by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Those three things tell YouTube to show this video to a wider audience. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.